So, um, Robinsons Bay Ratepayers Association. Church, can you hear me? Yes, very well, loud and clear. Are you expecting me to move the slides forward? Because, yeah, yeah. okay. Yes, apologies, I can't be there in person, but I think Suki's got things organised at that end. Right. Okay, great, <laughs> far away. Okay. Yeah, I feel quite a sense of responsibility speaking on behalf of Robinson's Bay today as I address serious matters relating to the wastewater scheme. It feels as if a dark cloud has been looming over our community for the last eight years, and I have observed firsthand the negative effects this proposal has had on residents. Plans seem to be forever changing, and as costs escalate, so do the risks. Next slide, thanks, Suki. The current application is vastly different from the 2020 plan, and many previous safety parameters have now been relaxed. The total land area to be irrigated has reduced from 40 hectares to 35.7. The slope criteria for irrigation has increased from 15 to 19 degrees over time. The winter irrigation rate, when land is already saturated, has increased from 1.5 to 1.68 millimetres per day. This is 12% above what was previously considered to be the long-term acceptance rate for land stability. Land over 200 metres is now included for irrigation, some of which will require pumping to an elevation of over 300 metres. Note that no pumps are mentioned for this purpose in the application. All of these factors increase risks, including ground saturation, slips and nutrient runoff into streams. Next slide, thank you. This map, this map shows the irrigation areas in purple and the tank platform in black and white near the middle of the site. Next slide, thank you. Wastewater will be stored in huge agricultural tanks on a hillside plateau that will require 50,000 cubic metres of earthworks to create flat platforms. Irrigation shown in purple is to take place close to the tank platforms, both above and below them. The application is based on underestimated wastewater volumes. So either a lot more storage will be needed, you can see that there is little room for expansion in this location, or is likely to overflow in wet winters, potentially for days or even weeks. Slide five, please. The geotechnical report warns that these soils are extremely prone to changes in moisture content, that sloped instability is displayed in this soil type, and that tanks should not be placed near the edge of gullies or potentially unstable slopes. Next slide. The purple shows irrigation areas near the very top boundary of this site, Land that has a history of saturation during winter and that was previously excluded is now included, some which has had no geotech assessment. Mm -hmm. Next slide. This shows the irrigation area areas in purple with both historic and current slips and steep drop-offs. Loosening safety parameters in a desperate attempt to make the scheme fit is not an acceptable solution and just increases risks. Trying to add irrigation from devotional as well just seems ludicrous when there is not enough room now. Next slide. Soil saturation, slips, the collapse of the tank platform, nutrient runoff and sewage overflows into waterways are all real threats and compounded more by climate change. There is no plan B if the system fails, no operational plan and no environmental assessment relating to overflows into the harbour. No guaranteed protection has been provided for the property's heritage listed archaeological site, nor any written agreements for those with affected water supplies. We also view a monocrop of highly flammable carnuka to be a major fire risk, and despite occasional green firebreaks, not the biodiversity forest that we had expected. Next slide, please. Costs are skyrocketing. Plans are deeply flawed and even more money will be required to remedy issues. After nine years, Holt attempts to find a land-based solution now before it is notified later this week. Return to the cheap, cheaper, more resilient harbour outfall solution pro proposed in 2015. Despite best efforts, it has not provide, proved to be feasible, affordable or safe 
to develop year-round land-based wastewater irrigation in this area. Focus instead on repairing the ancient broken pipe network to reduce contamina contamination and stormwater infiltration. In closing, if this does go ahead, we request the Council and ECAN to undertake notification of the various consent components jointly with a single hearing panel. Components are all interrelated in, and it seems a huge waste of both time and money to run two separate processes that would clearly make it extremely difficult for submitters and the hearing panel to assess effects. Thank you for your time today. Thank you, Sue. That's an extremely clear and coherent submission. Much appreciated. And perfectly fitted into the five minutes. So now we have Suki. Um, just before, could we get in some information on the... But the, the, the two Everything's hearings been instead of one? Here. Why? Well, okay. I'm happy to take any questions for, for Sue um, during my time here because I won't take the full five minutes for my personal submission. All right, also we'll start the timer now. Yes. No, well, she wants questions now. So we started the timer, so when it gets to five minutes. So take questions. Um, so thanks for the... Actually, I mean, yeah, very clear about the wastewater stuff. Um, I'm actually, this is a question about the storm, stormwater network actually in Robinson's Bay. Um, does the association have a, like, so we've put a request into the, into the, you know, through the LTP process to improve the stormwater um, network in Robinson's Bay. Um, has, has, there, has there been any consideration given to, to the efficacy or the, you know, the, the need for that at all? So you might have a view. Um, well, I've been requesting for quite some time that the stormwater network does get dealt with, but I have not had any communication from the council about that. Um, despite my many requests in the last two years, we haven't actually had any progress. Okay, that might be a catch up um, so between you and I. Because it does cause flood flooding in the bay. Yeah, okay, thank you. Very cool. Thank you. Thank you. Tyler, you've got a question? Yeah, it's probably most aimed at staff, but um, in, that, in that final slide, in Sue's um, requests that actually ask that we pull the notification um, or we pull the application, um, I'm wondering even if that is possible. Um, that's probably for staff and whether they can do that or do we have to continue to do that? If it was, the council's appetite to do that. Okay, so we can put that question forward. I don't know if we need an answer now. Yep. Thanks. Thank you. All right, no more questions.